Good day. I am Derek Hogan here with North Georgia Technical College. I've got a little something for you today, and we're going to take a little test and see what is quicker. Can you program conversationally on the machine quicker, or is it pro quicker to program on the CAD system and then CAM system and go about generating the program that way? Now, before I get started this, I want to show you one little thing here, explain to you why I'm going to do one thing I'm going to do. I have this big cavity right here to machine out. Now, if I go this way, it goes around, traces out a path, it's going to go about making a bunch of unnecessary cuts around the part. It's going to actually take longer to do. So what I'm going to do is my initial shape I'm going to create is going to be this area right in here, so I can go about roughing it out. So I'm going to use my point three, four, five, and six to go about it. I'm going to add a little bit to the, my point three and four to get three and six to get it outside the part, so that I can actually have it com complete this cut here. Then. I'm going to do the same little thing here so that I don't have a lot of extra material to take off right here. I'm going to draw this shape right here and have it cut in. It's about 350 thousandths here. I'm going to cut in that material right there. So that's going to be two little changes I'm going to make to this as I go through this. Okay, confession. If you've ever went to do um, programming and like be recording yourself while you're at a controller, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do by yourself. So what I'm going to do here is use something we have called Mazacam. Mazacam is it basically is Mazatrol on a computer. It is very much the same way. It is not really any faster. It's not. In some ways, I think it's a little bit slower here than it is right there. But what I'm going to do is go with this. So we ha you can pick your controller. So we've got a smooth seam mill, and basically what this does is emulate your controller here. Okay, I'm going to start my time here in just a few seconds and see how this goes. Now, I don't know which of these is going to be exactly the fastest. It could be that the maze of troll method is slower. It could be that it's faster. But once again, there's going to be situations where they both work out well. Okay, let's get started like right now. Okay, first thing I want to do is I have my material. My material is going to be carbon steel here. Initial Z, I'm going to do a quarter inch above my workpiece in this case. ATC mode, I want to have to do XYZ, which is one for our machine, and I'm not doing any multi-axis machining. Next thing I want to do is call my WPC. I'm going to use WCPPC1 here. I'm going to add G54 there. Next, then scroll down. Next thing I want to do is my um, probe. It's going to be MMS. I'm going to probe my piece here. Click my tool data one here. And I select my probe, which is tool 18 on our machine here. I can tell it to skip it if I want to, but once again, in this situation, I'm not I'm going to actually probe the piece here. First thing I'm going to probe is going to be my Z face. So I'm going to mash my Z face here. And since my, my zero is going to be my lower left hand corner, I'm going to have this move up an inch and over an inch. And I'll have it probe from a height of 0.25 which is where my initial Z is. The next thing I'm going to do right here is going to be my value here. This is what it, my heights would be here above. I'm going to do this right here of 20 thousandths. That way it sinks there's 20 thousandths material on top of it. I'm going to do my X face next. Negative 0.25 here. Negative 0.25 again. And I'm going to go negative Actually, I want positive 2.5 on this one right here. Go positive, let's just say positive 2.5. 0.25 there. And let's go negative 0.25 here. Okay. Now it's going to ask me my coordinates right here. The R value here would be the coordinate. Once I get this done, I'll take it out of the machine and show you some of this, these right here. How will these actually look like on the machine itself? It's the same. It just tells you a little bit extra information at times. This is going to be my coordinate. I want my coordinate here to be be negative 0 0.05. I want to give myself 50 thousandths to take off. Next face I'm going to do is my Y face. So I'm going to move it over a quarter inch here on my X. Move it back a quarter inch. 0 0.25 negative two five there. Once again, negative 0.25 for my depth there. This gets my probe below the surface there. And my value there, once again, is going to be negative 0 0.05. Okay, so point end right here. And that gets me to where I have my part um, probed. It's ready to go. 
I'm at about three minutes in, two minutes and 45 seconds in. So let's see how the rest of this goes. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to face off that extra material I left up here when I had my Z face be 20 thousandths below the, my Z zero be 20 thousandths below the, the surface there. So we got a face machining, face mill. It's going to ask for depths here. I'm going to enter a zero because my WPC is going to be at 20 thousandths below this. My amount of material I have to remove is 20 thousandths here. And in this case right here, um, Mazatrol thinks of this number right here as a positive right here. So it's going to be a positive value. So you're going to have a positive value if you're taking off negative amounts there. I can pick my surface finish. I want this to look pretty good. So I'm going to go here with this one right here. And it calculates my Z finish depths from that. Next, pulls up a, fa a finishing and a roughing pass on what it is. So I go over to my nominal tool data right here, select my face mail. My approach, I can set to auto set here. So it automatically um, figures out where to put the tool down. I can do unidirectional, bidirectional, and all. I'm just going to go bidirectional here. Depth, I'm going to click auto set, calculated my depth there. Width, I'm going to click auto set, calculates my width there. I'm going to use carbide auto for this right here which gives me my cutting speed in feet per minute. And my feed rate, I'm gonna use carbide auto over there. Now that's a little bit fast, I need to check that value there. I can go about, uh, this is, my feed rate in this case is gonna take into consideration the total number of teeth. Face mill we have has four teeth. I'm gonna go about four thousandths per tooth. So I'm gonna go about 16 thousandths here. I wanna turn my spindle on forward and I wanna turn my coolant on there. Go back down my next tool value. And tool data again, same face mill in this case, only, only one I have tool six in the machine. I'm gonna do auto set for my approach, bi-directional again, auto set again, carbide auto, and um, carbide auto there. That number is actually pretty good there. Spindle forward, flood coolant, three and eight there, M3 and M8. It's gonna ask me for my start location. I have square, circle, or arbitrary. I'm going to go with square. And I'm going to go from my zero point x, zero point y, up to my total piece in my x value is three and a half. So 3.5 there. And my y value is going to be 2.5. Now one thing that I would have to do differently on Mazatrol is if I was doing this, it would not automatically draw this shape over here for me. I have this open, I can close this out, but you can kind of see how you would go about doing it. Come up here and I got plot shape. So my plot shape, it pulls up here and draws out the shape of my toolpath there. Okay, so that's gonna be my first pass. Okay, and click shape in there, and that's good to go. Now the next thing I did, I talked about just a second ago, was gonna be machining that corner off. So I'm gonna get a line machining here. Now, one thing I like that the um, software gives me on the machine itself is images as to what these are supposed to be. So that makes it a little bit tougher sometimes to keep track of what I'm actually seeing here. So I'm gonna be machining this area right here. So it's gonna be, on the right side. So I'm gonna go in line right. We'll see once we do the toolpath verification if this is correct. My depth, I'm gonna take my full depth here, 0.63 for my full depth there. And that's gonna be 0.63 off the surface there. Now my S, my, this right here is my stock on my X axis there, my stock on my axis is there. We have 0.35 there. Um, roughness here, I'm gonna go eight here. It does automatically enter my feed, my finish feed rates for both. I'm going to go with zero my Z because the back of this gets machined off. Why mess with that if I have to? And I'm going to enter interference right here. One, this is enough to make it sure it clears. And I'm not going to do a champ for yet. I will in a minute. So I'm going to do an end mill. Now the next thing I want to do is go over, do my tool data again find my end mill here. I've got several here. I've got two, I've got 
one right here, I got two right here. In this, this case, knowing my machine itself, um, tool 16, I believe, is my four flute. I may have to change that machine, but that won't be a hard change there if I have to. Auto set my approach. Um, go over here. I'll set my depths there. My width, I'm going to go about 50 thousandths here on that. And I'm going to use Carbide Auto on this. And Carbide Auto here again. And I'm going to go Spindle Forward and Flood Coolant there. Same thing here on my next one. Tool Data again. Pick the same tool here again. Auto set over and I'm gonna go with about ten about five thousandths here and auto set my feed. For some reason or another it gave me a weird number there. I'm gonna give go two eighty on that and it works well for that. And auto set my there, I'm going to go about four here again, this, and then Pendle Ford Flood Coolant. Next thing I want to do is start my shape. Now, I don't have the drawing here. I'll pull the drawing over into this right here um, for this, but my drawing, this is point seven and eight I want to do, and I want to go from point seven, which is 3.12, Five down to at, on X and 2.5 on Y. So 3.125 on X, 2.5 on Y. And a lot of this I can skip right here. I'm going to go to my roughness here. And it's going to ask me about there. Go 8 there. Once again, I'm going to go with a line move here. And it's going to go to 3.5. And my Y value is 1.5 here. Once again, I don't have to do anything with these right here yet. I'll get my roughness. As you can see, it put this line here on my piece here. Neat thing, I can trace along right here. Once again, if I was doing this in controller and to make this a little bit fairer, I'd have to go finish my point, my part out here, shape end here, then go up to do my plot shape. And I have to pull it over in there. I'm at 10 minutes so far. I've got the basic um, face mill done and I've got that corner cut off. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut out the center area right here. I'm going to cut the center area here because of the fact it um, will create for a weird toolpath if I don't. Back to face machining. Go to, I want to do, to go to pocket here. My depth is going to be 0.63 again distance from amount of stock to take off there. Once again, bottom, I'm going to go with one of these stars here. Walls, I'm going to go eight. So it gives me, you know, zero finish there. And interference and chamfer there, we're good there. That's going to go one here and then not worry about the chamfer there. That one is the interference on the radius there. It, it, just making sure that you have enough clearance there for that. Okay, I uh, get my end mill right here, tool data again. Pick my, I'm gonna do my half inch end mill to start with. And then auto set my approach. And I wanna cut in this case right here, let's go right here so I can pop the shape here. I wanna cut this out right here. Now it's an internal cut. So my internal cut for climb milling is gonna be a counterclockwise direction. So I wanna use a counterclockwise cut. Now I have some options here. I have an intelligent pocket mill right here, which is basically like, you know, your helical milling and things like that, your high speed milling. Set my depths. I'm going to set my depths there. I'm going to set my widths and let's see, what let me do with it there. I'm going to go with 50 thousandths on that. That should work okay. Uh, carbide auto here. And then I'm going to go with um, about 006 here. Work that. Spin a forward flood coolant. Come down to the next one here. Do the same thing here. Now I'm going to once again um, do this with that end mill here. Auto set my approach. 
and I'm going to go to my finishing pass. I don't need to do IPM because I'm not going around. I just want to go around a piece here. I'll just set my widths there. And oh, matter of fact, I'm actually going to skip my finishing pass here. So reason why I'm going to skip my finishing pass here, go edit, line erase here. The reason I want to skip my finishing pass is I'm actually not going to I want to finish this later on with a contour pass around the outside. Uh, shape, it's going to be a square. It's actually going to be a square for this. So I'm going to go square here. I'm going to pick my start point, and I want my start point in this case to be um, probably, let's see, I'm going to go around counterclockwise. So let's go with right up here for that. And I want to have it off my piece a little bit so my radius and my tool will get up there. So my top value is 2.5 on my Y, so I'm gonna go with 2.75, 2.8, we'll go with 2.8 for that. So 2.8 for my Y value, 2.8 for my Y. My X value is gonna be, it's 0 0.62, my 0 0.3 there is 0 0.625. So. Now I don't have to have any additional well I'll show you in a second here I need to have my x value here that's gonna be 0.6 is in 5 share this value it's gonna be 2.875 and my y is going to be down here at um, 0.625 these next ones here are the corner like putting a corner radius in here if I put a corner radius value in there it would put a corner radius on a piece on areas over right there. For what I'm doing right now on this right here, I don't necessarily have to worry about it. My shape is done. And as you can see, the shape is beginning to look more and more like my part up here. Last step, I'm gonna go to line machining. Once again, I'm gonna do line out again. Depths 0.625, well 63, that's what I've been using. 0.63 here again. How much material I need to take off? I have about 50 thousandths to take off. Roughness, eight there. I have no, no stock on this bottom surface. So that's good there. Interference, one inch works fine for that. And chamfer, I can enter a chamfer or a corner radius here. And that's on the outside of the part. I'm gonna enter a chamfer or a value of 0.03 for this. And what it does is it gives me three tool options here. First is my end mill. I'm going to use my half inch end mill for that. Auto set my approach. And I want to go, this time I'm going around the outside of my part. So to, I want to go in a clockwise direction. It's a clockwise cut there. Depth is going to be auto set there. Width, I'm going to go with 0 0.04 for that. Cutting speed, uh, carbide auto, and then go with 0 0.006 here. My M values, M3, M8 for that. Go to my next one here. Because I have a radius in this corner, I'm going to go with a smaller end mill. I'm going to go with a quarter inch end mill. I actually have a 3 8 in this machine here. So go to the 3 8 And I'm going to auto set that clockwise cut again. And then widths of, in this case, 0 0.01 for my finishing pass. Auto, carbide auto on that. And then let's go 0 0.003 for that. 3 thousandths feed. M3, M8. And then the last one, my chamfer tool. Tool data here pulls up my chamfer tool, which is tool 10 on my machine. Auto set my... Depth there, clockwise cut. And my widths here, depends on how much chamfer I want right here. And it's going to call for 30,000. So I'm going to give it a 30,000 chamfer there. Carbide auto here. Let's see, carbide auto here. And then carbide auto here. See what it does there. M3, M8. Now the next thing I'm going to do is start an arbitrary path around my part here. So I am right now at 17 and a half minutes and I have pretty much got my program done. All I gotta do is go around and do the outside profile here. 
I'm going to start at point 1. It's a line move. My, point without, my values can be 0 here, 0 here. Now my drawing calls for a corner radius. The rest of this right here is like vector stuff and stuff I don't have to have for this right here. It calls for a corner radius of 0.25. So I'm going to go 0.25 there. Come over and go to roughness here again. Do an 8 value for that. And that's going to cut a corner radius on this corner here. And you'll see it begin to add it as we go along here. So my next point is going to be point 2. Point 2 is up. Is my still an X value of 0. A Y of point, point 0.25. There. And I'm good on everything else on this one right here. Next one is going to be a line move again. It's going to move back to this point right here. So my X value is going to be 0.625. My y value is going to be uh, in the wrong value there, 2.5. My y value is going to be not 2.2, 2.5. My y value is going to be um, 2.5 there. Okay. So I got point one, two, and three. Right here. Now I don't need anything else there. Good there. Roughness there. Good. Next move is going to come back here. I'm going to have a line move again. A X value of 0.625. A Y value of 0.625. And a corner radius here 0.25. The roughness right here, I'm going to go 8 again. Done. My next point is going to move over to here. So my X can be another line move. My X value is going to be on point number, that's point number 5, is 2.875. My Y value is going to be 0 0.625. Once again, it's going to have a 0.25 radius in the corner here. And I go with the same roughness I've been using. You see how I put that little bit of the arc in there? Right there. Now the next one is going to be a line move again. Point, let's see, uh, 2.875. And I'm going to have a Y value of 2.5. There, and it moves up to the top. Put my roughness value in. Okay. So I'm up to here. Next move is going to be a line move again. 3.125 and a Y value of 2.5. Moves over to there. Roughness, 8. Line again. Moving down to this point right here. That's going to be 3.5 on my X, 1.5 on my Y. So again, no need for anything else there. Roughness of 8 there. Next move is going to move down to the bottom corner. Line move there again. 3.5 on my X value there. 0 on my Y. Roughness of... See, it's going to be point, um, 0.25 there. Last move. I'm going to enter. It's going to be another line move. It's going to go back to my 0 0.0. 0. 0. Then we'll cut a corner radius here. Miss a step there for a second. Okay, one thing it didn't do for me here. Let's see what happens if I do shape in here. Okay, I added it in there once I, once I completed that. So let's get it in there. Last thing to do. 
I'm done. Well, it's already going to cut the chamfer because I got the chamfer in there. So I'm going to go end. And then I have some choices here I can make on how this would go about play. Once again, on the machine, it tells you, do you want to continue? Do you want to run it, keep running it? Do you want to repeat? Do you want to shift? What type of WPC do you want? Uh, 22 minutes. So once again, it's kind of funny. These ended up being about the exact same amount of time. But here's the big advantage. If I had been at the machine doing this, it would have been exactly like this. It would have been exactly going through the same motions, the same steps, the same buttons. But I would have been able to actually load the machine and run the machine right at that, that moment in time. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. The I've always felt like the maze of cams a little bit slower than doing it actually at the controller. And I'm going to test that out and see how well this plays out. I do expect this to be quicker than doing it in this. Now I'm going to video the entire thing. But I want to show you the start time, and I'll show you the start time when I finish. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is select program, program right here, work number. I'm going to do five for my work number. Okay, my start time is 28:32, and I'm going to get going on this. And once I get going on this right here, I will let you know when I finish. And here we go. We are done. So if I look up there, I've got 8.37.56. So that was right at 10 minutes right there. So that actually ended up being quicker than my um, original. I do have a problem right here I got to fix. I got a number on somewhere in one of these right here. So I can go back here and fix that and see where that's at here. The one thing I will say first time I looked at the screen it's a little bit intimidating trying to figure out what all these numbers were and what all this meant right here and looking for my number this off here and I think it's gonna be further down here is program edit so here I've got my initial rough right here 875 pocket ah, 750 right here my x value that's supposed to be where well, these numbers reversed here it's supposed to be 2.875 right here this is supposed to be 2.750 there so now if I go to verify this port shape should match up with what you see there if I start the toolpath, go through, it shows the probing, face mail, pocketing out the inside area there, and so on and so on. All done in the controller. So, 10 minutes to do the program, a couple minutes to do the verification. So basically, let's say, let's say about 12 minutes. So, you know, there's going to be situations where not every part is going to be feasible to do this way. But when the parts start getting more complex, it can kind of take a little bit more time and get a little bit more cumbersome out here. But the so one thing about this right here that's kind of neat is I can be programming a part while I'm running other parts. So the machine can be sitting there actively going through in doing what it's supposed to do. Now, which would be faster? Would Maze Troll be faster or would Conversational? It's a good debate. Sometimes it's going to really depend on the part you're making as to which is faster. Got a total tool pile time of 1210. I can make that a little bit more efficient if I wanted to. But overall, it's not horrible. Okay, I am Derek Hogan with North Georgia Technical College doing some work here for Practical Machinists. Now today I gave you a little interesting one where we debated the merits of CAD CAM versus conversational. It should be a good little debate. I'd like to see your thoughts on this right here. Um, if you have any questions, any concerns, or any other ideals, let me know in the comments.
be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.